Hi all, today we're going to be going through is the new Bamboo Labs 3D printers. They've recently come out with a new range of 3D printers and I'm going to go through the P1P model, uh, how good it is effectively, um, you know, how, how quick and efficient it is, uh, how, how the actual prints come out and the actual studio itself that you operate on. Uh, so we'll go through first into the studio itself. Uh, so the studio itself makes it very easy to kind of prep and prepare projects. Uh, comparing it to, say, Prusa or Cura and all these kind of, I guess, other softwares. I'll show you some of the actual settings as we go in through this. So I'm just going to pull up a 3D file here quickly. Okay, so we've loaded up an actual print here. Uh, it's on the bed itself. You can see your typical settings, what you can change and stuff like that. You can change the nozzles. Uh, you can go up to 0.6, um, all the way up to 0.8. You can drop down 0 0.2. 0 0.4 seems to work pretty good. You got your different bed types that come with the Bamboo Labs. Uh, textured PEI plate seems to work pretty well, and that comes standard with the uh, Bamboo Labs P1P model. Uh, you can add or remove your filaments, and this is simple as just going add or remove, or when you start the actual program itself, it will ask you to select what you commonly use. Uh, I commonly use a generic PLA. Um, you know, you can select the Bamboo Labs one if you're using their one. Uh, point to note, if you are using their, I guess, PLA, it doesn't seem to like too much if you accidentally select generic PLA. Uh, might come out with bare stringing, so make sure you have that selected correctly. And same with the actual bed types also, because uh, they are rated to different heat temperatures and stuff like that. Uh, so make sure you're selecting the right plate that you are using. Uh, in the actual program itself, you can select how fine you want your stuff, 0 0.20 being your standard. Usually 0.16 for your helmets comes out pretty, pretty nice. Uh, and then you go through your actual settings itself. Now, a lot of these settings you don't need to kind of, uh, I guess, amend per se. Now, you can change your wall loops to include, say, free walls and stuff like that. Um, I like putting the dry, dryroid infill. I found that has generally seems to operate very efficiently and smooth, but you generally find uh, no kind of, I guess, no foul prints at all with the dry, dryroid infill. Um, I've run grid once um, on a helmet. I kind of got caught up on some of the grids on the actual printhead itself. Uh, going into speed, you can change the speed depending on what you want your first layers and stuff like that, speed it up. Um, you can also do this manually on the printer itself uh, where you can slot down uh, to 50% speed. Um, leaving it standard, it's, it's quite quick, um, but you can also put it into this uh, like a ludicrous mode that makes it go absolute chaos speed effectively. Uh, I haven't yet to trial it though because the normal speed is very, very quick. Uh, going to supports, you've got your normal supports. Um, you also got your tree supports. Now the tree supports are actually quite amazing. They do quite work, well, work quite well. Um, I noticed on the helmets, they're a bit iffy. Uh, I like to stick to the, say, the normal ones where you might find you've got like these kind of raised sections like that. On the bed, say for example, um, we can see this is oversized and we'll, we'll scar this down in a minute, but um, I like to leave that on normal generally. And you can also select, say, manual mode. Um, and I'll show you this stuff shortly as we go back to it. Uh, if you're using, say, a different model on the Bamboo Labs, you can also have um, an AMS unit effectively where it's printing out supports for you in a weaker material. And then you can have it printing out in your normal PLA, say, PLA plus where it may be um, for the other material, but you can select that material on here if you're running multiple types. Because we got the P1P model selected, it's only the one type because it doesn't come with the AMS unit. You can add it on, however. Um, going to the actual file itself, you've got all these little options up the top here effectively. Um, so you can scale it. We'll drop this one down 95. And noting on this printer itself, it is a 300 by 300 meter or millimeter bed. So it is, I guess, quite small, effectively, um, in schemes of things. So a lot of people are hoping that Bamboo Labs come out with, you know, an actual bigger build plate itself. So 
you know, you won't have to finicky around with these too much. Um, but you can see stuff like that. That fits on the build plate like that by dropping down 95%. Having it at 100%, uh, it's extremely difficult trying to fit it on. Uh, now, going back to supports itself, you can actually, you can manually paint these on. Um, so if I go, and I'll show you the differences. So if I go tree auto right now, and I'll go slice, for example. And we'll so this... we've done the automatic tree support here. And you can see in the actual tree support itself, you know, if you don't put any support blockers, it'll quite fill it in effectively. Um, it might go a bit overboard and stuff like that, but the tree supports are generally pretty good. Uh, I haven't had a huge lot of success in relation to uh, the actual helmets thus far. And we can see we're getting a little error there because it's making the brim just go over the border there. Um, and you can manually change that yourself. Um, you can make a no brim, but you can manually change that to say two. Um, you know, and same with the supports. Say, hey, that was a fair bit of extra supports and stuff like that. We want to go tree manual, um, but we want to paint on our own. So we'll go to that. We'll come back to prepare. We'll select him. And up here, you can you got your support painting. So you can simply go in, grab your little device here, and you'll see it's kind of highlighted, and you can start painting all this in. So if you wanted to say, just put supports here, you know, I'm just doing a very messy drawing here just to show you an example. So just say you wanted on supports there, you'd probably do your supports all around there, wherever there's kind of those gaps, and you put your supports in these visors, say, you know, if you want to, and then if we go slice again effectively. So as we can see, we've painted on our little supports and stuff like that. Um, obviously you'd support those kind of whole areas around, um, you know, and you've got your different options in those supports. Uh, now a couple of little neat little functions it has on the actual uh, object itself effectively. Um, you've got your variable layer heights. So if you want your adapted layer heights effectively for say, you know, your top to be a bit smoother and stuff like that. You can select adaptive and make it quite smooth, you know what I mean? Uh, generally, you don't do it on a helmet type of details like this. Um, but, you know, if you're putting it, say, um, what, like a, a stubby cooler or something like that, uh, you would effectively could put your adaptive layer on. Uh, now, it does have all these kind of other settings, you know, your typical kind of ones. And even in the objects, you can go in and if it's got multiple different layer lines effectively to it or different objects on it, you'll have these all lay layered here effectively. And then you can change them quickly through those kind of objects. Um, so it is a quite a neat software itself. I have had lots of fun so far with the actual Bamboo Lab software itself in designing stuff like that. Um, you know, it is very good in the actual, I guess, laying it out and making it as efficient as possible. Uh, you can you could see the times before in relation to the helmets, they're significantly reduced print times. And we'll go through a little bit in this video and you'll see the actual detail and some of it printing out. And a quick little uh, fault fix that we had with one of the clogs we had uh, in relation to some silk filament. Uh, so please stay tuned, uh, watch the actual printing out and we'll explain as we go through. So once when we are jam, it's very easy to actually fix the hot end. So it's simply just an Allen key, remove it, heat the hot end up, push it through, it comes out, uh, and Allen key back on the hot end. It's the easiest actual one I've had to date. So as you can see, you saw the amazing quality, how fast it was printing. Uh, ever since purchasing this, it's just my other print, 3D printers have sat idle. Uh, you know, hopefully this has given you some good informed choice. Uh, I guess if you were researching the Bamboo Labs as a possible choice, um, I'd say you got nothing to lose effectively uh, grabbing this. I've had no faults to date other than that, that one hot end issue, uh, which was quickly fixed. And, you know, the actual software, the 3D printing times, I guess the only downside is, you know, you are spending more 
on your 3D printing filaments. And that's purely because you're going through so much more filament because of how quick it actually prints. You know, instead of waiting two, three days for a possible print, you know, you're waiting a day for that print. Uh, so you're saving significant time for the same quality. So uh, if, you, if you're looking at the actual 3D printers, I hope this has informed you well. Thank you for tuning in and have a great week ahead.